Welcome to a quick tutorial on the switchboard package for R. My name is Mark Lajeunesse. I'm the developer and my motivation to create the switchboard package was to uh, get students engaged, excited about simulations. And I use dashboards previously to run simulations, like say for example, like a Monte Carlo simulation on regression. And students are excited. It's great. You know, you click a slider, you move a slider around, you change the parameters, you know, and you see a graph change. That's fine. Uh, but it's lacking pop, energy. And so switchboard is meant to fill in that gap of um, energy when it comes to our simulations. And the idea is it uh, uses that tickle TK to render um, simulation parameters in real time. Tickle TK is fast. It's in base R. It's a very mature language nested, hidden within base R that allows you to do a whole bunch of cool stuff. I love it. It's poorly documented. That's quite the shame. I don't know why. I mean, it does cool stuff. Look at this. Isn't that neat? Um, and so the idea is uh, today we're going to create this quick interface right here for this goofy infinity shaped animation. Um, again, I want to emphasize, this is a little window that switchboard creates and it, you are, you interact with the uh, simulation as it's going. Now, a few things uh, before starting, who would be interested in using this? If you have an existing simulation that is based on iterations, Okay, so it's nested within a for loop or a while loop. You could use switchboard. You could quickly uh, pop it in and it's not really going to impact your simulation other than performance wise because, you know, now you're graphing stuff. So things are going to be much slower. I know everyone's trying to optimize for speed. Um, if you're using this, you're not so much optimizing for speed anymore, but more for the dynamic stuff of being able to uh, switch the parameters on your own terms. Also for education, I feel like I'm going to create a bunch of these GUIs here for various um, statistical simulations, meta-analyses, um, just fundamental manipulations of regression to uh, see what happens under what conditions if it um, performs well in estimating parameters. But today we're just going to keep things really simple. So let's just jump into it. Um, here is our studio switchboard. You could find it on GitHub or uh, CRAN, CRAN. Um, you could install it like this. That's how I have it installed on this computer that I use to record stuff. Um, but let's just jump into um, the interface. So again, like I said, the architecture of this is you plug it into a loop and what happens is there's a little tick, tickle TK window that pops up and then you populate that window with various widgets um, including you know switches or sliders or what I call eavesdroppers which are just like a moving windows time lag windows of the data that are being iterated upon in the loop um, there's also injectors, which um, allow you to manipulate those parameters directly. That's kind of borrowed from the hacker community, injectors, eavesdroppers. They have various nefarious uses, <laughs> uses. but here, you know, I'm, I'm not doing anything really nefarious. It's just, you know, we are manipulating simulation parameters. I feel like it's a useful way to describe how we're actually manipulating those things. So the first goal here, I'm going to create a loop. Then I'm going to throw in a switchboard and then slowly we're going to build that switchboard. So it looks like this one right here, which is just a, an animation of an infinity loop with uh, some noise. Why not? It's silly, but why not? All right. So our first goal here is to uh, load in the package. create a loop 
and in the loop we're going to throw in a switchboard which animates these really silly simple uh, simulation parameters that animate a uh, little infinity loop. So let's start with the loop. I'm just going to do a generic for loop with a super long a ton of inter iterations. Why not? And um, and then let's let's calculate the coordinates for the infinity loop, like we saw in the previous uh, little picture here. Oh, wait a second, this is slow. There we go. Right. And so we start off with the x coordinates and the y coordinates. We're just going to throw in a bunch of sines and cosines. That's what you're going to get. The the uh, cyclical uh, motion is just you know, it's all done with math. It's called algorithmic animations. So let's start with our x-coordinates, where we use a cosine. And then the y-coordinates, which we'll use the sine. I don't really know these equations by heart. I got a little piece of paper here that I'm using. Uh, I had to look it up online, how to do these silly animations. Okay, so uh, with every iteration, the x coordinate and the y coordinate is going to change, and because they're thrown in, uh, they're transformed with cosines and sines. They're just going to do like cyclical. I don't know what else you call that type of motion. It's going to move around in a cool way. Okay, uh, but if I you would run this right now, it would just iterate for a super long time, calculating the coordinates, um, and so we need to throw in a switchboard which will try to animate that. And the first thing that we're going to animate is we feel like a bivariate plot of these x, y coordinates. And so let's uh, start with the switchboard. And every little switchboard dashboards, or whatever you want to call it, um, starts with the switchboard. And it just allows you to quickly um, modify really basic things of like the canvas that you're going to use to throw in a bunch of widgets. And I know beforehand that I need to slow down the animation so that we can see it because the tickle TK is fast. And so you need to kind of do these manipulations to um, have a cool visualization. So what we're going to do is not plot every single X, Y coordinate that gets calculated we're going to skip a bunch uh, to get the smoother, smoother infinity shape. And then I'm going to throw in a title. This is totally unnecessary. Of the switchboard. Okay, so if I would run this now, I'm not going to do it because it, nothing's going to show up. But it's, you're going to get this little blank window that's going to stay there until it's done looping. Super boring. Now, the way you add widgets to that window is you pipe it in. And you throw in uh, any number of widgets. Again, eavesdroppers, switches, sliders. We are going to use a two-dimensional bivariate eavesdropper, which is just a visualization of a bivariate plot that gets updated with every iteration. And the first thing we're going to throw in this um, little function, this little widget, is the uh, xy coordinates. That's going to tell the eavesdropper to plot a new point at xy for each iteration. Um, and then because it's plotting, we need a minimum and maximum value so that you know it stays within the plot. And all these are just like um, vectors with two items because we have um, it's a bivariate plot. You have your x and your y.
Okay, we got our uh, minimum, maximum. Let me clean this up a little bit. Then we want to, well, I guess I could run it right now. No, no, what I want is to, uh, okay, with every switchboard outside of the loop, you want to be able to close the window. Now there's some other uh, switchboard widgets that do this automatically, like the progress bars. But here we need to tell it that, hey, the simulation is over, please close all the windows, clean yourself up. If you've ever done a, a Tickle TK progress bar in R, um, that's, it has the same structure. You have stuff inside the loop and stuff outside the loop to close the window. Okay, so if I run this, let me uh, block this stuff out. If I run this, hopefully, if I coded it right, it's just going to throw up a window with a bivariate plot. And it's probably not going to look too good right now. Uh, because the speed, the speed of which the iterations occur, it really dictate the animation. Tickle TK is fast, and so you got to kind of throttle, throttle it sometimes to get the visualization you want. All right, there we go. So there's the infinity loop. I guess it looks not too bad. I mean, uh, it's long. It's not quite the same as uh, what I got here. And so let's tinker it a little bit more to get to get that. Um, and I think all I need to do is just modify the delay in which the little points are deleted. And for that, you use the forget parameter. And we're not going to change it too much. And normally things are deleted within 400 uh, milliseconds. And now we're just going to delete them quicker. All right, there's two other things I want to do to the eavesdropper. And that's add um, a little switch to it, turn it on and off. Kind of like I had it at the beginning of the video. And then I want to make the size bigger. Because right now, every, all the widgets are kind of in micro, uh, what I like to call micro widgets. Uh, just for speed, right? If you got a giant thing, that's a lot of space to animate and it really lags the performance of your simulation. And so everything's kind of micro size to uh, fit a lot on a dashboard without suffering too much performance wise in your, how quick your simulation iterates. So we're going to throw in a switch and that's going to create a little switch in the corner of the eavesdropper. And then, um, and then we're going to double the size of the widget. All right, let's try it out. Okay, so the widget is two times as big now. And it has this little, uh, little switch at the top. We turn the switch on. And then we get our animations. All right, well, you could be, you could finish doing a simulation if that's all you wanted to plot, do a bivariate plot, but we want to be able to tinker with the parameters of the bivariate plot. And so now we, I'm going to throw in a little, uh, little switches that's going to turn on and off um, noise with the plotting of the X, Y variables, all right? So we want to throw in some noise in there. So first we're going to create two conditionals. We'll just call it noise, I guess. Noise one. And it's just going to add a random normal to each X, Y variable. Let me re repeat this for the Y axis. Okay, and then we need to initialize these uh, switches outside of the loop. Like that. We got our switches. We need to add 
um, these random normals to our coordinates. And I forget, I need to also initialize these uh, randoms. Probably not necessary, but since the you don't want it to add noise when it's not on, right? That's how you kind of go about it. There's many other ways you could go about it, but this is the quickest way to just add noise to the XY variables. So next thing we've got to do is to put the switches onto the dashboard. These are called control switches. I couldn't call the function switch because there's that would conflict with switch, you know, one of these fundamental R functions to quickly uh, do a conditional on a bunch of stuff. So I call it, I regrettably called it control switch. Um, we need to call it control switch pair because we want to squeeze in two switches within a little widget. And then um, we need to give the names of the two things that it's going to manipulate. And we want to manipulate switch one and switch two. Switch one and switch two. And I think that's it. Okay, let's run it, see what happens. Let me just quickly look over, control switch pair control these two things we got switches switches all right let's uh let's just test it out there we go all right so now there's two switches on here let's turn on our graph let's add some noise oh no well I messed that up. It's certainly adding noise, but it's adding way too much noise. We need to control that. I mean, that kind of looks all right too. Let's turn it off, right? But it's adding way too much noise. So we need to uh, cut down some of that noise. I'm just gonna divide it by 10 and that should be enough to stop everything. All right, let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so let's turn on our switch here. There we go. That's a regular kind of amount of noise. A appropriate amount of noise. <laughs> uh, all right, it's looking good. Okay, let's move on. Finish it up. Now in the other uh, window, you know, I throw in this little, another eavesdropper that just uh, displays the noise and when you switch it on you can see oh there's now noise added to the plot so the next step is just to quickly add that um, secondary eavesdropper and then uh, clean it up clean up the switchboard a little bit to make things look nice in a better order all right so we are going to pipe in Another, another eavesdropper. This one is just going to be a univariate one. And we want to track just one of the noise generating um, variables. We'll give it a little label called noise. And then again, we have to, because it's a plot you got to provide the boundaries for which things are animated all right I messed up I should not be live coding I misspelled minimum and maximum uh, minimum max Maximum and just be more explicit here with the eavesdrop. 
pay attention to the noise. I want to see the noise. All right, let's uh, let's run it, and then we're almost done. Okay, there we go. Uh, you can't quite see here, but uh, let's turn on our window. Turn on some noise. There we go. And noise is broad. The noise is not corrected in the eavesdropper because I divided it by 10 on the x-axis. So I could fix that to be more representative of what's actually being plotted. There we go. Okay, the last thing we need to do is to reorganize these items on the plot on the switchboard. Right now they're just like stacked up on a line. Uh, but you could organize many, 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 many widgets in a grid-like organization. And so we're going to quickly position these things in a grid so it just looks good. And uh, I think the way I had it in the here was we got their switch in this, and then the eavesdropper underneath, and then the big version of the bivariate eavesdropper next to it. So now we need to just uh, tell switchboard where to place the widgets and then we're done. I'm just going to make some room here for stuff. Okay, so we want to first move our position of the eavesdropper and we call it place on grid grid is like just a little matrix of uh, columns and rows and you tell it where you want to place it in the matrix and so we want to place the big eavesdropper in the second column on the first row and then we want to place the control switches Uh, in the first position of the grid, at the first column, first row, and then we want to place the smaller eavesdropper on the second position of the same column. So, column one, row two. And this should result in our final Ooh, I messed it up. I got all those numbers backwards. Okay, so we want we want the eavesdropper to be on the first row, second column. We want the small eavesdropper to be on first row, second column, and then one one. Okay. I mean I should not live code. I'm sorry, friends. Oh, now the eavesdropper is inside the big one. Oh, this is a rough day. Okay, I'm not going to re-record this. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> okay, eavesdropper. The big eavesdropper is in the good spot. The control switch is in the good spot. And this. There we go. This should be it. This is the winner. This is the winner. What is going on here? There we go. There we go. Finally. Whew. Let's just... I'm doing my best, friend. I'm doing my best. <laughs> okay, you guys get the picture. I You could probably code this much quicker than I could. I'm just silly in front of the camera. But um, anyway, you get an idea of like how to create a quick switchboard for your simulations. I'm hopefully going to generate many, many, many um, other tutorials uh, to help you out. There's a lot of neat stuff you could do. Progress bars, other types of visualizations. But in the end, I think I've this tutorial went way too long for all the silliness that went into making that little uh, switchboard. I just like to say that if you have, if you find a bug, tell me, 
or if you have ideas for widgets, tell me. The way I got set up now is I could create a widget super fast. I mean, I mean, I think I I could create like a widget a day for a year. Uh, but there's already a bunch of widgets in the package. I think there's about 30 different widgets to put on your switchboard. I'm shooting 400. Um, I'm always polishing to make things look nice. But in the end, switchboard might be for you if you're interested in doing these quick interfaces for your simulations. So again, let me end. My name is Mark Lajeunesse. I'm at the University of South Florida. And um, stay tuned. I'm going to create some more tutorials. Right on. Take it easy.